my friends, and welcome to episode 141 of the Kiss Army Nation podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Pasquale Vary. And I am Claudio Espera. Welcome to the show, everyone. So tonight is a very special night for us. Our guest deserves all the possible accolades from the Kiss Army. With over 200 Kiss shows in his credentials, Nicola was the brain and hands behind one of the finest Kiss fan scenes in the world, Strike. He is also the founder of the Kiss Army International. Nico has organized and participated in numerous Kiss conventions worldwide with exceptional guests as Ace, Peter, Eric Singer, Bruce, and Vinny. To steal one more, his photos were used by Kiss for the booklet of Ally 3 and the video Kiss Confidential. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our dear friend, Nicola Chicarone. Nico, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Hello, everybody. Come stai, bello? Pretty good, pretty good. Non c'è male. <laughs> non c'è male. Tutto bene, bene. Bene. <laughs> so, Nico, it's so great to have you on, uh, on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Now, although this is an interview episode, I want to ask an obvious question that we often ask during our fan profiles. How and when did you get into KISS? Oh, okay. Well, uh, when it was, uh, uh, let's say, the winter of 1980, which is a pity because KISS just played a few months before in Rome for the only time they played in Rome. So mm -hmm. I missed out by this little and uh, that's when uh, because probably after the show everybody was excited I, I could I, I was hearing a lot of people talking about it it got me uh, curious and you know hooked me up then and uh, how did I get it to kiss well basically because I had friends around who like kiss and uh, and then uh, there was uh, the there was the year that uh, that winter was the starting of school, 1980. Uh, I started the uh, high school, and so I had to meet new people. And so when I first entered the classroom uh, with all new friends, new faces, I saw one with a kiss bag, uh, and uh, and because uh, and was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, well, you know, now I got a subject that I can talk about and start <laughs> breaking the ice. And uh, and so, you know, uh, she was way more into Kiss than I was. Uh, actually, I wasn't into Kiss that much. I just knew about it uh, from friends. And so we started talking. She got me. She started copying me tapes of like uh, live, uh, you know, and other albums. Uh, and so little by little, I got to you know, listen to them and got more, uh, you know, into into the band. So that that was the that was the the start. So, so you know. besides the girl, <laughs> you know, what <laughs> yeah, did no, you that... find? What did you find so special about the band? Was it was it more the makeup, more the music? Well, obviously, I, I was already uh, into music. Uh, I used to go see shows, uh, no, not not that much at that time, but I used to always have a, a video music, a, ch a music channel, uh, uh, listen to records. Uh, uh, I, I used to like uh, all the, the stage uh, uh, lights and shows uh, in general. Mm -hmm. So then obviously Kiss were uh, masters on that. And so uh, their look, their shows uh, was the, the main thing, I must admit. Uh, music, uh, music was good. Uh, at the time, it was, uh, you know, I was made for Loving You in Europe, uh, very famous. In Italy, we had uh, uh, always on TV the videos of Sure Not Something, I was made for Loving You, uh, repeating all the time. Uh, and so basically, uh, I, I like those songs and I like Dynasty, but, you know, because I wasn't too much into rock or, mm -hmm. or hard rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in fact, when I started listening to Alive, I was like, oh, that's a bit too too hard for me. And, you know, I didn't like it too much. But then I keep listening to other things and then I liked. So it was uh, it was mostly because of the of the look and the show and the music. I started to get to appreciate it uh, with time. So. OK, OK, OK. 
So, you know, Nico, your story as a KISS fan is so rich that uh, I don't even know where to start. So what, what was the first thing that, that you did or that you created to try to express your fandom? So was it found in the, uh, the uh, KISS Army International? How did you express your, your love for the band? What did you do? Well, basically, uh, as soon as I started uh, falling in love for, with the band, I started collecting everything that I could. At the time, there was not much stuff uh, in Rome to buy. And uh, so I started writing people, putting advertisement in, in uh, Kerrang or other international magazines. So from, from those magazines, you would get PayPal's all over Europe and start trading newspaper, uh, magazines, articles from Italy, given to Sweden or England or France and start trading. And, uh, and I really liked the, the collecting because I could see more photos because at the time there was no internet, obviously. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and the only way you could uh, see a new photo of the band is to buy a new article, uh, books. Uh, there was no books around at the time, at least uh, in Italy. So it was always in, in you know, magazines. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, obviously, besides the official album, but there wasn't much... Uh, uh, anyway, so so then uh, the the idea of starting the fan club was more than any other thing was to uh, be able to get in touch with as many Kiss fans as possible. So that was my initial uh, idea was uh, let's start a fan club so everybody who loves Kiss will join the fan club mm -hmm. and I will have more people so I could trade more stuff and I could see more photos, I could have more things. Uh, at the time also when I started, there was already other fan clubs. There was a, a, a Kiss Explorer Army from Ron Askis, which uh, rest in peace, he passed away, I, I heard uh, not too long ago. And uh, yeah, the best fan, fan club and magazine in Europe. Then there was Firehouse Magazine in Canada, LF Magazine in Japan. And so I, as soon as I knew that there was these uh, things, I started uh, joining them so I could get more stuff because the stuff from the fan club were different from the stuff from the magazine, where right. things article more in depth, specifically, uh, uh, with all the minutiae for, for the die yards uh, that you will never find in a normal magazine who talks about the band may maybe when a, a new album is out or a new tour is out and just saying basic things. So the fan club were the best source of uh, of uh, cool information. So then I thought, oh, I can't. in Italy there is no fan club, so I can start a, a fan club. Uh, why not? I... I must admit, I decided at the beginning, I can copy from left to right and center, uh, get all the photos from that magazine, uh, translate the article, not from Japanese, because yeah. from, from, <laughs> <English>, from, <laughs> from the Five House magazine and from Askis. I could, uh, so I said, you know, I can put together something that it's the best I found in a certain period of time. Uh, the best I found that, to put in my magazine. So Italian, they maybe doesn't even know English because at the time, not many people knew English that well or not at all. Uh, so then I say I can make in Italian so people can uh, can read things that they would not uh, be able to do other ways. And so I started the fun club. That, that was the reason. There was no, no other reason, no higher ideas like I can make the band or I can go to a tour, you know, yeah, at that yeah. time... Uh, uh just see if i could see a show in fact i started the fan club on the day of the of my first key show in uh, in lausanne in switzerland basically oh, the first okay. of november 1984 and so i said i'm going to this concert i missed out on the liquid tap tour the year before friends of mine from home went and i'm i was so jealous that they went and i couldn't i was too young so then i animalized the next year i said i don't care i just go it doesn't matter i, I need to go so i went there i said by as a uh, italians they didn't play in italy in that tour so italians would only go uh 
to Switzerland like I did because it was the show at the border between Switzerland and Italy. Right. So it yeah, was yeah. it was close. So everybody would go from Milan, uh, Turin, all the north of Italy, where basically there are all the heavy metal friends even today. Uh, more mostly are in the north. So then I said, all the Italians will be there. I can start there. I can spread some uh, advertisements, some little flyer. I had some little like business cards, similar, uh -huh. Uh -huh. like there were photocopies cut in eight part or yeah, something like that, and written announcing the fan club. I said, you know, if anybody like his and is willing to go from his city to Switzerland to see them, then he probably will want to join the fan club. And that's what happens. In fact, uh, I started then, uh, but as I said, the first magazine was just like. Uh, uh, you know, a patch up uh, of uh, everything else I could find, yeah. uh, which is still uh, at the time was was pretty interesting and cool for an Italian because those things uh, wasn't that easy to find. Exactly. Even if, yeah. You know, not yeah. great things, but still were the best yeah. things and were better than nothing. Let's say. Absolutely. So, what are what are some of your most uh, memorable moments running the running the the fan club? Not at the beginning, maybe because it must have been tough, but later on. So, uh, if you have to pick, let's say one or two key moments in your life, uh, saying, "Well, you know, it was so great to have this fan club, so I'm I'm glad that I did it." What what uh, what could those be? Well. Uh... First, basically, uh, it is only within one year. The year was 1988. And in that year, in March, we had Ace Frehley coming to London. Uh, and uh, and then in uh, in the summer, there was Kiss for the whole tour in Europe for cra of Crazy Nights. So in that year, there was uh, a major change in the fan club because uh, uh, finally I could meet my my gods, my idols. And uh, and because I already had the fan club for a few years, uh, you know, uh, the band already knew me because I was sending the Strike magazine there, even if it wasn't that great, but still. And so, um, you know, so that was my key moment because also in that year, I loaded my backpack with all the Strike magazines. Okay, first I went to London. And I was able uh, to to meet Ace uh, because uh, through Italian magazine uh, they told me there is a our journalist who's going to interview Ace. If you want, you can stay with him. And so I said, oh yeah, please, please. Even if I just say in a corner of the room, for me it would be fantastic. So that's when uh, uh, when when I met Ace, and then. Uh, I don't know how, but I was be able to get the schedule of what he was doing. So I was everywhere he was, science session, interview, radio interview, hotel. Uh, I figured out where he was. Uh, probably Eddie Trunk uh, helped me out there because he was doing the managing ace for that. Uh, tour. Uh -huh. And uh, he was very nice. And uh, so I got all the information. I was following ace everywhere he was. And so then he put me even in the special thanks of the of the album that came after that. So I was, I was uh, you know, in heaven. So then after that, uh, I made a very good magazine this time, finally, with all the original material. My photos, because I was in front row of that show Ace, uh, my stories, and uh, I could print a, a really good magazine. And it was uh, the second one that I actually printed uh, on, a, on a printing place before it was only photocopies. Uh -huh. So, uh, so uh, but it was still in, in black and white, uh, even the cover, the first two issues. But then when I went to Europe for a Kiss tour, I had this magazine about Ace in Europe. It was mostly about that tour, uh, that concert. But it was all original. It was cool stuff. And so I loaded my backpack with all those magazines and advertisements, flyers, and things like that. And so I followed the, the whole tour of Europe. I only missed five shows out of... Uh, I seen 80, 18 shows out of 23. I only missed uh, Reykjavik, uh, Donington, dates that were strange, uh, spot on uh, here and there. Mm -hmm. But um, the main tour, I followed uh, all of it. And so basically, I would go early. Uh, I didn't, I had the kids were so nice to give me passes and tickets for every show, but they were not laminates, they were just passes, meaning that I could go there uh, right after the show. 
or uh, or pre-show, which means just before they would go on stage. So basically in the afternoon, I had nothing to do. I couldn't get in backstage. So I was uh, talking to all the fans uh, who were coming to the show early, meaning also that they were the diehards who go early to get a better spot in the venue. Uh -huh. And I would uh, introduce myself and show my magazine. So after a tour of, of all that, I was selling my magazine too, so I could also pay my, because I that too cost me probably all up $500 for to see 80, 80 shows, plus the magazine I would sell. So because I, I bought an, an interrail, like at the time there was a one month pass on the train. And uh, so that, that cost me probably 300. And with that, I could travel all, all over Europe for one month. And it okay. was exactly the month of the Kiss Tour. And then I was sleeping in youth hostel with the money I could make uh, with, the, with the sale of the strike. I would sell five copies every show pretty much and uh, be enough, having enough to, to sleep and, uh, and eat. To pay your bills. That's good. It was, yeah, no, it was, uh, I, didn't, I, 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 I was never rich. I still am not rich. <laughs> I'm still surviving, but I, I like the idea. I, I like the, the, the struggle uh, way of life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so basically I followed the tour and uh, and uh, and I was always every time at the hotel trying to meet the band and sometimes they would go down and have a chat uh, and, and basically the year was for me uh, the the magic year because I, I became friends of the band I saw so many shows I took photos so I had so much original material for myself uh, I had stories from uh, the entire tour that I followed, basically, and I started getting a lots of members. So, yeah. Nico, your um, your magazine Kiss Strike is very well recognized among Kiss fans around the world, and as you mentioned earlier, there, there were other fanzines at the time internationally. So, what made Kiss Strike unique from the other fanzines out there at the time? Me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, basically, yeah, unfortunately sorry. or fortunately, fortunately for everybody else and unfortunately for myself, uh, I'm a perfectionist and I'm a workaholic. <laughs> that means that uh, I never rest, I never relax, but the other get the fruits of my, <laughs> my being. <laughs> so... Uh, I always try to be the best. I always try to do the things the way they're supposed to do. Uh, I have a lot of pride of of uh, releasing something that I did. The Strike was the best magazine just because uh, I wanted, as I was doing the magazine, like everybody, then I wanted to do the best magazine. So I would always notice uh, uh, what is the best quality of each magazine. Uh, what are uh, uh, the best photographer who would put the best photos in each magazine? I would contact them, and uh, I would always try to uh, something cool from one magazine. I would copy, but not that uh, you know. I would credit and everything. Nothing, nothing. Uh, I, I can say exactly everything that I did, and I always put the credit, the courtesy from uh, from my, from this magazine, right. from this other magazine. I never try to say, oh, this is because uh, I'm cool. Uh, it's it's only me. No, no. Uh, but I would kind of like uh, put together the best from the best. So, uh, so uh, um, you know, like uh, a magazine would have uh, like a color cover. I'd say, well, I got to have a color cover too. Uh, one magazine would would put uh, an article on merchandise that I thought it was a cool idea. I would put an article on merchandise or something that I thought it was cool. I would also uh, start to do it in, uh, in Strike. Mm -hmm. So Strike was uh, the best of what I thought it was the best. So, okay, okay. Uh, okay. You know. Hey, Nico, we 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 um, we mentioned in the opening that you've you've been to I don't know if more or two hundred shows or something like that in in many different parts of the world. You mentioned before that uh, your first one was back in eighty four for the Animal Eyes uh, tour. Um, I'm going to ask you about your first, and then I'm going to ask you about your last show at Madison. So, uh, <laughs> so for the first one, uh, what are your memories? What do you remember about that show? About the show, I remember a few things. First, that I, you know, lined up in the morning. I put the Gene Simmons uh, makeup while I was on, on, on queue. Uh, then I tried to sneak in 
video camera, you know, the filming camera, eight millimeter uh, uh, photo camera. I try to bring all my father's gear, amateur gear, but still I try to bring it with me. Uh, then they stopped me, and I, it was a it was a mess. <laughs> it was a, I, I don't know, the great about the show. I remember a lot of Eric Carr. Oh, okay. I don't know why, but um, I remember that I, 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 my favorite instrument is the drums in general. Uh -huh. But uh, but I remember that I really was uh, was looking paying attention a lot to him. Uh, I don't know why, because um, I don't know, but it, it seems more uh, mature and adult that they look through the magazine. From a magazine, look where a young kid who's in a new band, there he looked like a professional, uh, okay. uh, grown man. And uh, and I, you know, I was, I was curious. I, it just intrigued me that thing uh, uh, that he looked different from what I expected. Then, uh, uh, and obviously, my, my favorite member, you know, people knows me, they know it's uh, Gene and Ace are the, 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 two, the two, of my, two of my favorite members. Okay, and uh, so, yeah, so then I remember that I also went to the merchandise booth at the first show, and I and I, I wanted everything. I saw like, you know, like a kid in a candy store. I was like, oh, I want to have that, I want that, I want that. And, you know, so when I paid, I didn't realize that I, I gave her all the money of uh, the girl who was giving me the merchandise. And after the show, I realized I didn't have money to return, go back home in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in Switzerland. Really? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got into, you know, I was, you know, I was a teenager, I was a kid, and I didn't have a clue. And they had different money with the French francs. For me, it was all, uh, you know, like uh, Peter Chris <laughs> says, Monopoly money. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and basically, uh, I didn't realize that at one point for whatever I got, I had to give her all the money. I said, oh, whatever, you know, I want the stuff. <laughs> How did you get back? Hey, you know, I always find the ways. Uh, I'm <laughs> Italian. Uh, I got a million uh, ways to do things. <laughs> well, in that particular case, I, I went outside the show and as I, I start asking for a ride to the buses. So some somebody from a bus, I say, hey, you might have a spare seat in the bus. I, you know, I need to get somewhere in Italy. And so the, I got I got a seat on a on a bus to Milan, obviously for free because they were all kids fan, and you know they understood my situation. Uh, so you know I jumped on that, and then I got the train from Milan to Rome for free. But uh, you know when I got the 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 guy uh, who asked me for the ticket, uh, I don't I don't know maybe I got a fine or something or I got away with it. One way or another, I go back home. That's that's, that's right. You got it. You made it. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> so those are the things I remember from, from the show. <laughs> and I stayed the whole day to stay in front row, and all of a sudden I was just back because uh, because of the stop me for the for the camera gear oh. because I went to I ran to the merchandise. I was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I was an idiot because I spent the whole day there and I didn't run to the to the, the, to the front row right away. <laughs> uh, just because I was, yeah, so see, that's one of my things. I always I want to do more Everything. things that I can actually That's handle. right. That's so right. then I, I took my, you know, I wanted to be front row, then I wanted to film, I wanted to take photos. You know, obviously nowadays I can understand it was pretty much impossible in Switzerland. Plus, right. in Italy maybe you could have get away, <laughs> but in Switzerland it would be it's not the same. <laughs> worse than in Germany. So <laughs> then I, you know, I started with uh, wanting to do so many things, and I ended up just uh, okay watching the show. Which was there awesome. you go. There you go. Anyway, that's a memory from the first one. Yes. There you go. So now, if we if we fast forward uh, to December. Uh, uh, you know, last year uh, we had the great chance to meet at the uh, at the Hard Rock Cafe. You know, for the Kiss Army Spain uh, party, where I, I met you and your and your yeah. beautiful son too. So, uh, what do you think about the last shows in uh, at Madison Square Garden? I did. I I wanted to see six shows. Uh, I ended up seeing five because Paul was sick, as we all know. And uh, in those shows. Uh, so three shows before the garden. Those shows were great. I got the uh, laminate. Uh, I got to see the sound checks. I even meet them at the hotel and say hi. I got the 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 
the fantastic uh, uh, present of having the photo with the band on the last chance for anybody, which was uh, in Baltimore. Uh, uh, thank you, Frank. <laughs> You know, the, poor Frank, he gave me the bracelet because he gave one, he got an extra one and he didn't get it. I didn't ask for a photo. I have many. I didn't even really ask for, I, I didn't really mean to have a photo. I don't want to push too much. I had enough and I didn't ask for, but Frank got an extra one. He said, oh, if you want, I said, oh, thank you. Thank you. It'd be great. That's Actually, awesome. It's a good way to say goodbye because in New York, it'd be too crazy. I won't be able to do anything. So, so then, uh, uh, but then Frank uh, uh, didn't want to push too much uh, and I sneaked in a line that I wasn't supposed to be so I got the photo done and he wanted to be nice and precise and uh, and he didn't get the photo so I'm sorry for Frank but thank you Frank you made another <laughs> little dream come through for me so anything I just said those things because it was great it, it was going one of the best tour everything was getting fantastic all the rides with the best friends Kevin uh, you know R Russell uh, Frank I had a ball uh, I had uh, the best three shows uh, some of the best three shows uh, time that I had with all my friends and uh and then uh, then New York for the last shows, I, 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 like everybody else, I had great expectations uh, because also in Baltimore, I saw like uh, the whole venue filled up with the smoke up over the heads of people in the sound check. Uh, no, in the sound, just before the show, be between the sound check and the show. Yeah. So I thought they were trying uh, new things for the final shows. So I say, oh, that is going to be amazing. Uh, uh, this effort on, uh, you know, I, I, I thought it was going to be full of surprises the last uh, the last show. And at the end, basically, you know, what we had uh, was just uh, the razors. The same. Uh, mm -hmm. And he brought the guitar and uh, and a lot of smoke, but not as much as I saw in Baltimore. In Baltimore, the whole venue was covered. That you couldn't see one head of people who was underneath. It oh, was, really? I got, a, I got a picture of it, likely, because I took a picture and I ran away because I say I don't want to spoil all the surprises. Uh, they took me by surprise. I saw the thing and I said, no, no, I don't want to see anything. I want to wait for the surprise at the end. So, but I say I'd rather take a photo. This is too cool. And I took a photo, uh, which uh, I'm glad I did because only one I took. And you could see the venue so over full with, uh, with smoke, with fog. And uh, uh, then anyway, uh, New York was it wasn't that much. Uh, it was just a normal show, uh, and uh, it was a big disappointment because, you know, you want to expect you, you know, you want to wait uh, to see some mention uh, ex members, uh, people who, who who were key people for making them uh, reach the level. Uh, managers, uh, you know, past members, yeah, poker, yeah. Yeah. designer, uh, roadies, uh, they have millions of people they could thank. And uh, you can even do it like in a movie at the end of the movie, like a million names scrolling down, yeah. which probably wouldn't be fair, but still at least better than nothing. But th there were many ways to, to do it. They had screens in the background of the screen, in any song you could put. Um, a person, uh, uh, a story, something, uh, a sentence, uh, something that would uh, just to celebrate. It's, I mean, it's been 15 years. Why would you do the same show as you did for the three past year? Not even just the last, it's the, with the COVID in between, this tour uh, lasts forever. Yeah. So it's the same show. We've seen it even uh, if you don't travel, you probably, if you live in New York, you've seen this show probably three, four times yeah. uh, in years. So it's the same thing. Why don't you make a special thing? Yeah. And that's, a, you know, big disappointment that way. In fact, I only, I only from the last show, the only thing that I think uh, that I remember as a great thing, and it was really great. It was one, one that you know, hardly see something like that. The crowd. Okay. The crowd was amazing. Like, uh, uh, the I was behind because I could this time I had to pay for a ticket. I couldn't afford <laughs> the, the, the closer tickets. Uh, <laughs> So, no, but also uh, the first day I was a little closer, the first of the two nights, and then I move a little back. 
uh, I wanted to see from behind. I wanted to have a, a wide look because okay. I saw uh, Baltimore, Chicago, front row or, or nearby the stage. Uh, because I said the last shows, I want to see the all the whole atmosphere mm -hmm. the people the uh, i can see their faces on the screen but i really want to see the big effort if the they stage do and everything yeah yeah, so, yeah and i must admit i i was like uh, looking at people even at the farthest row on the low farther away place everybody was standing and dancing like if they were in the front row so that is a, a an amazing memories that i have with all those people uh, then uh, you know of course uh, the racers uh, that was cool at the end it was uh, uh, with all the smoke uh, that was a cool part that was one of the things I was uh, expecting to see because that was really cool as an ending and uh, and um, you put like uh, five or ten of those things in a show and that would have made a huge difference and then we so, were all surprised with the with the avatars after the smoke uh, that's even worse but <laughs> I, I wanted to leave it you, know, you wanted that, to that, i know i know you wanted to yeah. be there i know, I know. That, that that at that show i was hit by a few trucks <laughs> not even just one <laughs> <laughs> you know i i, I actually I, I even cried uh when when i, I tried at the, at the beginning it was the same show nothing happened but the people was really cool and i was like i was like well you know, nothing is happening. They're not making it any special uh, to make it emotional for anybody. But, you know, it doesn't feel that good. Then at one point when Gene sped fire, then he got me. And I started. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's when you, I, you broke. I started crying like a baby. Oh, yeah. My son was there with me because my son joined me uh, from Rome. He flew in just for the New York shows. Uh, uh, and so he was with me and... Uh, Sometimes at one point, uh, some of those videos would come. My my bra my my son was having fun uh, filming me, yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, and basically, yeah, I cried all through when Paul just flew closer to me. I was close where the stage of Paul was uh, for us. Okay, later, the yeah. stage V. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and so then I, uh, you know, so probably two, three songs. I was really, it was very emotional, even though they didn't do much to help it. But, you know, then the Avatar, there's two more, because I, for now, I've just been talked about the first track. Then, <laughs> <laughs> there's two more tracks to go. <laughs> no, anyway, yeah, the second track was the Avatar. Come on, you know, it's like, <laughs> come on, you know. Uh, that is not the way to 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 end a career, you know. It's like uh, we've been always used to go through different lineups, because okay, you know, one way or another, Peter has to leave, Ace has to leave, all the other members have to leave, new makeup, no makeup, whatever it is, we always got used to see a different way of kiss, a different shape, a different member, uh, different uh, things. And we, you know, one way or another, we got away with it and we accepted it with more or less happiness. But replacing kiss with uh, with puppets, you know, the cartoon. <laughs> puppets. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, can. I mean, kiss has always been for all the kiss fans a live experience. Yeah. Yeah, I love the show. Yeah. I mean, uh, when it was a bad thing, you watch Kiss, the real human beings, on a video, which is better than nothing, but you still see some human doing show. Yeah. Uh, we all like the Marvel comics and all the other things, but, you know, a nice little thing that they do. I mean, a, a comic uh, replacing a band like them, I don't know. That... Uh, if you want to give that news to people, don't give it that day. You know, give it a yeah. little by little. Maybe start yeah. talking about, oh, have you seen how much money is making? Maybe we can do something. But you see, later on in interviews, little by little, we introduce this uh, big pill to to hard to digest. Yeah. <laughs> you put it as a final show, like to like to say, hey, hey, I got a good surprise for you. You know, <laughs> that's not a nice surprise. Yeah. And. Um, 
and I don't, I don't, I didn't hear anybody happy with that surprise. Uh, I don't know what went through their mind if they thought that there was going to be something cool and very well accepted. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think everybody, maybe, I don't know, if you got people around who just want to be nice with you, say, do you think it's going to be cool? People go, oh, yeah, cool, cool, it's going to be cool. But uh, I don't yeah, know. Anyway, really. so that was really bad. And on top of that, I mean, I love Eric. He's is probably my closest friend as a member. Uh, uh, I had a great time with Eric. We, it's it's uh, it's it's like a friend, even though for many years I I missed the shows because of my son and I didn't follow many tours. Uh, but I always felt uh, Eric was you know my my pal in the band. And Tommy, I, I saw him even uh, before he, he was into Kiss, uh, before he was in the band uh, already with. Uh, with black and blue and uh, and the convention time when he was a manager, I was very close to Tommy as well. I'm very, I like them a lot. I love them, but you cannot replace the puppets with Eric and Tommy. Die, come on, it's a, it's a joke. And I mean, you can do anything. Uh, not expect that is a cool thing. Uh, it's uh, uh, they're there because of the four original, and they yeah. all know. We all know they created the magic. If you gotta create a comic, a cartoon, uh, at least I know it's a lot. The problem there is not even uh, we all know, and they all know is the, that they would be the best lineup uh, for a, a, a cartoon. But the the royalties, the the permissions, all this makes it easier to have Eric and Tommy. But still, for us, for people who doesn't want to know too much about the the behind the scene things, we just see, you know, the these, the makeup, uh, some these, some uh, some you know, puppet with the cartoons uh, replacing yeah. Kiss and uh, yeah. um, come on, it's not it's not you know people. Yeah knows what I'm talking about. There's not much to describe about it. Yeah. And I love I love Eric, I love Tommy, but it's not the way to portray the band for posterities. That's, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's, it's a wrong thing. So, I mean, as I said, this would have been a bad news no matter what in any time of the day, but you put this at the end of the last show. Yeah. It becomes a terrible news. Not yeah. just the bad news. Yeah. Anyway, but you know, we'll probably it's gonna be. I, I think it's gonna be cool. I like. Uh, I like the idea of the avatar. No, don't get me wrong. If uh, somebody say, uh, "Let's go watch a kiss movie," like uh, they're they're gonna release probably this year the new movie. It's gonna be great to go see the movie. It will be great to go see the avatar. But thinking that that is the the way. That yeah, the, the wrong timing. The, 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 the only wrong, way, yeah, the know. wrong timing for the announcement. Yeah, yeah. I love the show. I love uh, the when it, when he mentioned that the parents were there with when he was coming with a cab, uh, uh, you know, taking people to the to see Elvis and and you know and uh, and he said that one day you people would come to see me. Uh, all these memories that they were specific for that he only say in New York. And uh, remember those things. They were great things, and um, yeah. So it was a good show. I mean, I'm not saying that the show was bad. It's just that I was. We were expecting a different show. We we were we were not expecting a a, a new you know like continuation of the band uh, with the, with the cartoons. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was the last show. You know, something came special. To, people yeah. came with some expectation, and uh, I didn't find what they expect. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a problem with probably with the show. There was nothing wrong with the show. It's just that people didn't expect that, that show. Let's say it's a bit like The Elder. I love The Elder. It's a great album. But the fans were not expecting an album like The Elder at the time, mm -hmm. and that, and that's why they they, they uh, people got disappointed. Not because it was a bad album. It wasn't. A, it wasn't the album that people was was waiting for. Yeah, the timing. It's all about the timing.
times. Nico, yeah. actually, I want to go back a little bit, talk a little bit more about you and your accomplishments, because sure. I know that you, you organized some KISS conventions, right? Yeah. So I'm sure we all agree that, you know, meeting fellow KISS fans, like it's like the ultimate high. That's what it's about, that sense of community, that sense of family. Now, is that why you organize these KISS conventions? Tell us more about that. Okay. Yes, uh, I can say that uh, I, I probably, before even KISS conventions, in uh, in uh, 91, I think it was, uh, in uh, in Italy, I I wanted to create something to get the KISS fan together. And I actually called them, uh, uh, called them a KISS party. With KISS fans, uh, we were basically everyone on his own in his room. And so uh, giving the, the opportunity to be able to be in a pub, in a club, a rock club usually, uh, and, uh, and uh, share a beer with another friend who likes Kiss, who can tell a story of what he saw, what, uh, what he's got, well, you know, that would have been a, a great thing. So that's, I did, at the beginning, I did, I did that. Then he started the Kiss conventions in America with uh, the special guests, the merchandising. And the American ones were mostly merchandise oriented, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, basically the guests were just uh, uh, invited to get people coming so they could sell them merchandise. So that's that's a basic idea. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I did it was was more to have. Uh, people together, like a bit like yeah, you did fun, the Art Rock Cafe thing yeah, after yeah. New York. You did, you did a great thing. After the show, uh, people like Skis uh, share a beer together, share a story. And it was a fantastic way. That's the best way. There was no merchandise there to, for sale. Yeah. It was just uh, sharing a beer with a friend, talking about, uh, you know, the shows. So that was the spirit that I had. Then, obviously, we got into this Kiss convention. But to be honest, I never really organized uh, a major convention. Gera Wimmer was the one. Gera was my director for, for Austria. And, uh, and he had this idea of uh, inviting uh, KISS members, uh, Peter Hayes, Vini, and, uh, and take him around the world, uh, around Europe, uh, with all uh, local promoters. And I was the local Italian promoter for Milan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to have them as a, as a guest. Uh, so it was more a uh, get a women idea that, that uh, did the conventions. I didn't have that much. I did this uh, maybe in uh, more in Melbourne when I was living there. I've been living almost 10 years in Melbourne. And when I was there, uh, you know, whenever I hear that there was uh, maybe Bruce coming with his band, with Union or uh, for a guitar clinic, uh, I used to go like, oh, if you're coming and you're already in the country, why don't we organize a convention? So then I would do them because they were there. It would have been very hard and expensive to fly somebody from the States to to, uh, to Australia or to Italy just for one off uh, thing. So so that's why I never really organized them because if you, if you would fly them in, uh, you have to organize many. And I really, I never really want, you know, organized them many things so i participated to a lot and i was a promoter and uh, a few things but it wasn't too much my thing the the kiss convention I, i'm more uh, to be honest i'm more into into kiss parties like you did in new york more like uh, uh, let's get together all the fans uh, and uh and, uh, and spend some time uh, together. It, it, in fact, I hope something like this will happen in Europe nowadays once the band is not coming anymore because we all have tons of friends uh, around the world by now and it's a pity not to see them uh, anymore just because Kiss is not touring. So yeah. we, we will find a way. I'm sure... Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure one way or another, I got some ideas. Uh, some others got some other ideas. Uh, maybe not. I don't know if this year because we're already fresh out of the 
traveling a lot and you know so we don't miss each other too much because we see many friends open lately but uh, but i'm sure from uh, from next year on uh, will uh, something will happen at least in europe in america i think uh, they're still doing it normally i think it has got one planned in indianapolis uh, for mid year but something like, i don't know i just heard of it nico i, I want to i want to ask you a question on uh... So now, now we're going to start slowly moving into your uh, your other you know passion, which is photography, and uh, you have a business going on. So oh, yeah. you're a professional photographer. So you um, you had a, a a big contribution with Kiss on 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 your uh, photos. So uh, what what do you think were your biggest photo contributions uh, to the band's history? And do you feel proud that they used uh, some of your photos? Well, uh, photography has always been my big thing. Uh, even when I start from collecting magazine articles in the very, very early days before the fan club, what excited me the most is looking at their fo I mean, at the time, there was no videotapes of Kiss going around. Uh, you could hear some bootleg audio, but if you want to see their faces, it was only photos. Yeah. True. Uh, you know, for many years, for probably 10 years uh, since I started, it was only uh, the, the great thing is looking at them in, in photos. So um, I don't know if I became a photographer because I love to see their photos or the other way around. Okay. But I'm sure uh, uh, photography has been always uh, the great thing. I would look at a photo, a great photo. For, for ages, I would uh, go through those magazines with Kiss photos, images, uh, and and be you know fascinated by all the photography. So when I was able to be there with my own camera taking the photos, I, I tried to do uh, the best photos I could, and uh, and I I'm self taught. I never took uh, photography lessons, but my photography lessons were the Kiss magazines or the Kiss tour books. Uh, because once you see an image and you think it's cool, and well, when, when you see them there through the lens, yeah. you know what's the right uh, pose, right. the right moment, uh, because you've seen it a million times before at home. So in fact, I must say that uh, I'm a, the very first show that I photographed is uh, Ace Frehley in 88 in March, because I was front row, I didn't have photo pass, but I had a camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a professional camera actually. Uh, somebody taught me, you know, put this and that, uh, and just shoot whatever. <laughs> a basic knowledge, uh, not much. Uh, but but I, I got some photos. That even if I look at them now, you know, I, I'm very proud of those pictures. I'm like it's something that I, I, that I would take even nowadays after. Uh, mm -hmm. many years of, in the uh, business. of the photography yeah. career, even in, in a professional way. In fact, when I was at the show, uh, for me, uh, if somebody say, uh, you want to photograph the show or you want to watch the show? I would say, no, no, give me the camera. I have more fun to... Oh, yeah, taking pictures? Yes. I, obviously, when you take photos, uh, you're not the whole time with the with the lens in front of your face, especially at the, at the time with the films that were expensive for my pockets at the time. Right, right. Maybe I could I could use two, three, four films in a concert. And so basically you can understand you take photos, but you also watch the show. Actually, 80%, 90% is the show, but you also are able to freeze one cool moment that you see something cool happen on stage. Right, you got right, the camera, right. you can you can freeze it for yourself and for everybody else. And also because I was doing the magazine, the fanzine, and I know that the best thing were unreleased photos I never before seen. And so as I was at the show, uh, I could, you know, have my stuff and stuff that nobody else would have seen. So many reasons why I took photos. Yeah. So Nico, you mentioned earlier that you worked with the band and you met the band. Can you share with us a cool story having to do with any member of the band. A funny, a funny story, maybe is in, in Melbourne with Eric. Yeah, it was a funny one that uh, that he wanted to well, during the show in the encore. 
uh, I was ready to take a photo with the bow, them coming out. And Eric, uh, at one point in Melbourne, he came out with uh, with a bucket of water because he wanted to throw it over me. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> what a joke. I hope. <laughs> I <laughs> so then I saw him come with this bucket of water, you know, aiming at me, try, coming towards me. And I realized uh, that he was through it on me. So then uh, at one point, uh, I, 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 I like, and everybody like Paul, Gene, they were all looking like, oh, let's see how I, because he probably <laughs> referred then, oh, look, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it on Nico. You know, so then everybody was waiting for this moment. And I, I, I had my cameras on me. Likely, so then <laughs> he was about to throw it, and I didn't have any chance to 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 avoid it. But then I I showed Eric, I said I showed him the camera, and I said, you know, I got the camera. Wait until I drop the camera, then uh, you can <laughs> you can do what you. <laughs> so then I I took off the camera, I I got back to the spot, and I went like open arms like under him, making him making him relax on. Uh, He's not going to go run anywhere. And then at the very moment he was about to throw it, I moved. <laughs> <laughs> so then everybody was laughing because he, he was so sure that he would get me. And he, he could have. I mean, he would have if uh, <laughs> if I didn't come up with this camera trick. <laughs> right, exactly. He used it. <laughs> but then, and there was, a, you know, just a funny thing of also the way that, you know, my my... My things with Eric was we were always joking and things and uh, you know having funny moments and it's good. I, I mm. like him. I like him as a character because he it's, it's got a lot of a uh, uh, quick sense of humor and uh, sometimes dark, quick dark. <laughs> but it's uh, it's so funny and I uh, I got similar and so we get along together because uh, you know he says one joke and says another and we we have a good time together. You know, but other stories, I don't know. Another time, uh, Bruce and Eric in Birmingham, like I was, because uh, as I said, I was always traveling cheap. I was sleeping in uh, a friend's uh, room, Barbara Caserta, you know, you know her. Uh, she had a room with, 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 with her boyfriend, I think. And, uh, and uh, I didn't have money, and I said, "Oh, can I sleep on the floor?" And you're, like, "Yeah, okay." And then uh, the band, uh, the band uh, heard that I was uh, 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 an extra person in the room that I wasn't supposed to be. So then Bruce got on the phone and he, and uh, fake his voice and says, "Like, oh, uh, we are at the reception here. Uh, we we found out that uh, you are sleeping in uh, more people in the room that you're supposed to uh, run down <laughs> immediately." <in> the <laughs> <laughs> and we were all afraid. I didn't realize it was. Here. And once you get off the, the elevator with Barbara as well, so she, <laughs> we saw Eric and uh, and, and Bruce uh, and Bruce laughing. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because we were all afraid, like <laughs> that I would have to figure out some other way to, you know, <laughs> find a company. Oh, you must have plenty of stories, man. I'm absolutely yeah, well, so many years, man, with them close to the band. Nico, you, you mentioned before, uh, you know, photography and your passion and uh, basically you you developed, you know, such a passion and now you're, you're having a business with uh, with your wife, uh, Ariana. So what, what can you tell about, um, you know, your company? What can you tell about Report Ace? That's the name, right? Report Ace. <laughs> Yeah, so what obviously, can you, of course. So what, what can you tell about the your company? The fans will know the A's <laughs> in uh, report because reportage uh, in in Italy it's photojournalism. Uh -huh. It's a reportage or something. Uh, you uh, and uh, because uh, because uh, nowadays likely uh, people like uh, spontaneous photo photos instead of the post photos. So then I uh, use the name uh, report the aces of uh, of reportage. Okay, that, got that's it. where it came, it came about. And because I shoot mostly, or I like mostly to shoot uh, uh, in photojournalism journalism style, which is spontaneous. Basically, is what I used to do with Kiss. I do it in normal photography. I I mostly did weddings. Now I shoot um, all sorts of things. So Nico, talking to you in this episode, it's really clear that you've had a remarkable life. Do you believe that Kith had a contribution 
to the life that you've been living? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, the 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 contribution of Kiss is that they were so great, so way better and above any other band in all sorts of ways that uh, they made me put all my efforts to 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 spend as much time as I could in my life uh, with them so that's their contribution everything else has been my 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 work I mean uh, I but uh, you know like uh, like uh, Eric also say oh everybody says like when you love what you do you don't work one day in your life yeah. and uh, that's what it's been to me I never really worked uh, I, I was blessed that I could spend since I was waking up until I would close my eyes for tiredness I would be the whole day uh, doing kiss things for me it was uh, it was the best thing. I never I never had girlfriends when I was teenager uh you know, it's uh, not. Don't even want to waste time. I didn't do shopping or anything. I didn't all my money, all my time was was going on kiss. Be, just because it was uh, the best thing uh, I could do for for what I liked. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's their contribution. I mean, they were so special that made me spend my whole life with them. But uh, it, it's um, you know, uh, I, I think. You know the, the the band contributed. You know, uh, as as you were saying, uh, Nico, to have a a beautiful life. You know, as a Kiss fan, as a father, as a husband. You know, uh, so many good memories. Um, you know, it's been. <clears throat> uh, I'm sure that one of the big contributions it's also meeting so many fans from all over the world. So uh, you're you're uh, extremely well, uh, you know, well known in in the in the Kiss fandom, and uh, I think. That's at the end of the day when the band st it stops playing and they're not touring anymore. What's left? It's the friendships that you created, you know, um, mostly with uh, with fans from any any part of the country. Um, uh, as a closing remark, I have to say it's been a, a true pleasure, Nico, to to spend time with you. You know, with all your uh, stories and uh, your your approach to life, which is so uh, so much fun. Um, thank you for your time, uh, buddy. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm sure we can have another one or two or more, you know, rounds because you have so many things to, to share with us and the audience that uh, it's been a true pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. I've been talking mostly about my life. We didn't talk much about Kiss, but it's okay. That's uh, that's what we're that's what we're here for. There's that's too right. many stories. I said uh, you can you can stay here days and days. But <laughs> you know, true. it's been it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's always good to talk about them uh, and uh, and what I did. Even myself, I look at what I did. I'm very surprised. I can't believe. Something. Now that I'm scanning all the stuff for the books for the book that I'm doing, I, I'm realizing like. Uh, you know how how was I able to do all these things in exactly. such a short time? So yeah, 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 yeah. amazing life, uh, a lot of work, uh, a lot of passion. Uh, kids deserve these and more. Uh, they're, they're the best, uh, no matter what. There you go. No what I love about episodes like this is that oftentimes our show is very North American centric. You know, we we talk to fans in North America. It's fantastic to have an opportunity to talk to the international. Kiss Army, the Kiss Army from around the world. It's great to have a different perspective. And it was amazing to have your perspective on your fandom and how Kiss has affected your life. And I think our, our fans, our listeners are really going to enjoy this episode. So once again, Nico, thank you so much for taking the time to come on our show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. So to the Kiss Army. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please send them to talk to me at kissarmynationpodcast.com. Please like and subscribe to support the amazing guests we have on the show. Until the next time, remember, never stop rocking. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, like and subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Spotify, Automatic, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to make yourself heard. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. See you all soon, Kiss Army.